As I'm sure a lot of you remember, a while back I bought this CNC machine for about 200 bucks. And the fact that I could buy a working CNC machine for that price was very surprising. Of course, it does have its issues, mainly due to the design and its rigidity, but the components themselves were fine, and the CNC gerbil control was actually really good. The only complaint that I had was that it just lacked the rigidity to do any proper cuts. The whole gantry style, essentially holding the Z-axis and the motor along two linear rails, isn't known to be the most rigid setup. And the plastic frame didn't help it either, though I guess there's only so much you can ask from a $200 CNC machine. With that said, there is certainly more performance that we can squeeze out of this machine. I've seen videos on YouTube where people have replaced the whole Z-axis and made it out of aluminium, and I really enjoy watching those videos, but even for me, spending that much money and time on a small $200 mill really isn't worth it in my opinion. However, there are some cheaper upgrades that we can do, which I think will really improve the performance of this CNC machine. The upgrades that I have planned to do today will only cost about $25, and hopefully it should allow me to cleanly engrave aluminium. I have a side project coming up where I need to engrave a bunch of aluminium, so if I can do that by the end of this video, I'll be really happy. The first upgrade I'll do is going to be pretty simple, and that's just to upgrade the anti-backlash springs. It's pretty much just two lead screw nuts that are held apart by a spring, and there really isn't that much force holding the nuts apart. As you can see, there is a fair amount of movement in the table, so I think if I use a much stronger spring, I can fix this issue and hopefully it should machine a little bit better. The first thing I'll do is to simply take out the lead screw out of the Z-axis assembly. And I'll then replace the spring for a heavier one. It's a pretty similar situation on the Z-axis and Y-axis. Now if you can't find a strong enough replacement spring, or one that's long enough, you can find one that is just big enough, and you can just double it up with the stock spring. That's what I did here on the Y-axis, and it hasn't caused any issues so far. With all that done, I can certainly notice a difference in the machine. It obviously won't fix everything, but I'll take some more improvements where I can get them. The next upgrade I'm going to do is hopefully going to be the real game changer, or at least as close as I can get to a game changer on this type of machine. What I've bought is a linear rail. You can buy them on eBay or AliExpress, and this one here is 400mm long, and it also came with two rail blocks, though you'll only need one. They normally come in a set of two, but this single rail cost me only $25. It's a pretty solid piece of steel, and it's going to be a lot more rigid than those round linear rods. Now, instead of replacing the linear rods, what I'm going to do is just find a way to integrate this into the assembly. Now, the way I'll be doing this won't be the most optimal method. However, it should allow anyone with a simple drill press to do this mod upgrade, or even a simple drill with a jig. So what I'm planning on doing is bolting the linear rail to the back of the gantry assembly so it can support the Z-axis and stop it from flexing backwards under load. The first issue this does create for us though is it will create a 14mm space between the back of the Z-axis assembly and the linear rail block. Now because I have a lathe, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some 14mm M5 standoffs from brass. However, I do understand that not everyone has a lathe, so the easy way to get around this is to buy some M5 standoffs from eBay and cut them or mill them down to size.
With the four standoffs made, I'll remove the Z-axis assembly. I'll need to drill four holes in it to match the four hole pattern on the linear blocks. Now you can do this with a drill press, but I'm going to use a milling machine. And no, this is not the best fixturing job that I've ever done, but it should work. Now if you are doing this with a drill press, you'll have to mark out the hole pattern beforehand. However, since I have the DRO, I'll use that instead. What I'm going to do is I'm going to find the center of the work, and then I'll use the center of the work as a reference to reference each of the holes. And doing it this way is going to make it a lot easier to drill the holes for the linear rails later on. Now I drilled the holes this way because I didn't want to take apart the Z-axis assembly. However, after doing this, I discovered that the linear rails were in the way, so I wouldn't actually be able to insert the screws to bolt the linear block on. So in the end, I still had to take it apart. The linear rods are a pretty tight interference fit, so I use some pliers just to remove it. It doesn't matter if I damage the bottom, the bottoms aren't being used, so use pliers on them, it doesn't matter that much. With it now taken apart, I'll now remove the gantry supports so I can drill the mounting holes for the linear rails. Finally, I'll tap them for M8, and then I can reattach them. Now I need to drill two new holes in the linear rail so I can actually bolt it to the frame. And again, I'm going to use the milling machine, but you can always use a drill press. Now this part is too long for the vise, and there is a lot of overhang. Obviously, I could have moved the part closer, but since I'm using the DRO, I wanted to do it all as one operation, so this gives me a really good excuse to bust out the jack stands. I was given them as a gift for Christmas, and I haven't had an opportunity to use them until now, so I'm really happy that I can now use them. Now in hindsight, I probably shouldn't have counterboard this part because I wasn't accounting for the extra material that I was using. So when I got to the other side, I'd realized I'd used up a little bit too much material. It didn't help that the linear rod was cut undersized, but this is still a mistake on my behalf and I'm just gonna have to live with it. With the linear rail bolted on, I'll now bolt on the Z-axis. To screw it on, I'm going to be using regular machine screws, just because there's not enough room to use proper caphead screws in this assembly. And with that done, I'll reassemble it. Now with the linear rail in the way, I'll have to find a new place to mount the Gerbil control board. And this probably wasn't a good area to move it, it's going to hit the table, so I'll have to move it later. With everything reassembled, that's the mod done. And the most important thing is that the amount of play and slop in the z-axis is significantly reduced. The difference is really night and day. Obviously, it's not perfect. 
The Z-axis is still made of plastic, but it is a huge gain in rigidity. With all that said, let's just get stuck into using it, and I'm going to start with engraving aluminium. Remember, the last time I did this, it was pretty rough, and it just wasn't crisp at all. And already, the difference is apparent. It's really night and day. There's less of a burr, and it looks a lot nicer. It really is a big step up in terms of engraving. You'll obviously still run into issues when trying to mill it with a proper end mill, and trying to fix that will require a bigger overhaul. This includes the whole motor and the Z-axis. Doing that is a pretty big job. Seeing as that it can engrave aluminium, it can do what I needed to do, and for only $25 worth of components, I'm really happy. And with that, that's pretty much it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.